Hi there, AP Pre-Calc students. Lesson 2.4 is all about exponential function manipulation. This may be a review from Algebra 2 properties you've seen in previous classes. We can use properties of exponents to simplify exponent expressions. In this first slide, you can see the properties of exponents that you may have known from previous courses. In example one, we want to evaluate each number using our calculator to three decimal places, which is the normal answer mode in the AP pre-calc exam. For five to the two and three tenths power, you should have 40. 0.516. 3 to the square root of 7 power is 18.295. And 6 to the negative 1 and a half power is 0 0.068. Let's look at the characteristics of exponential functions that are in the form of y equals b to the x power. We know the domain consists of all real numbers and the range consists of all positive real numbers. The graph of the exponential functions passes through the point 0, 1 because substituting 0 in for the power x gives us b to the 0, which is 1. So the y-intercept is 1. We've already seen if b is bigger than 1, then we have an increasing function that's continuous and concave up its exponential growth. If we have a b value that is a fraction between 0 and 1, we have a decreasing function. It's continuous and concave up its exponential decay. We know that the graph of an exponential function approaches but doesn't cross the x-axis, and we call the x-axis a horizontal asymptote. And we also know that y equals b to the x is known as a one-to-one -one function. It has an inverse that is also a function. Let's talk about those words one-to-one. -one. That's not gonna be terminology that we use in AP pre-calculus. We have new language to take the place of one-to-one. -one. That language for inverse functions will be seen in Lesson 2.8, we won't say one-to-one, -one, but we'll say something along the line that on a domain for a function, f will have an inverse, or we'll call it invertible, if each output value of the function is mapped from a unique input value. We'll also talk about how an ordered pair on a function f is an xy or an ab, let's say ab function, not xy. Let's say if a function has an ab point on the graph, then its inverse will have the, func the ordered pair ba on the graph. But like I said, we'll see more of that in lesson 2.8. So just keep that in mind, justification will no longer be words like one-to-one -one, if you've seen that in Algebra 2. In example two, we want to spend a minute drawing the graph 2 to the x and drawing the graph 1 half to the x on the grid at the right. Let's see what conclusions you can make about the relationship between the two graphs. Here's my two graphs. I can see that y equals 1 half to the x power can also be rewritten as y equals 2 to the negative x power. So it has a reflection across the y-axis of the graph of y equals 2 to the x. They also both share the same y-intercept at 0, 1. You might also add that the domain for f of x is 0 to infinity, while the domain of g of x is negative infinity to 0. And the range, 
both have the range of zero to positive infinity. This slide shows us the transformations of exponential functions and what the behavior of each transformation does to the graph. For example, a vertical translation of plus a value, such as plus four, would move our graph four units up on the y-axis. We won't spend a lot of time with these, but they're here for a reference for you. Let's move on to the next example. Here we want to use the graph of 3 to the x power by completing the table first in this column for 3 to the x. And then what would happen if we wanted to transform 3 to the x plus 2 power? I recommend you turn the video off and give this a try on your own. Come back to check your work with my work. In my completed example, you can see that the f of x function passes through the point 0, 1, that's our initial value, but the g of x function, our initial value is at 9 when x is 0, y is 9. The power x plus 2 caused the graph to move two units to the left. If you think of solving that argument x plus 2, where the 0, x plus 2 would be 0, x is negative 2. The transformation was to the left, 2 units, left, 2 units. And you can see that transformation here. From 0, 1, we move 2 units to the left, negative 2, 1. The y value stayed the same, but the x value shifted left, 2 units. One of the ideas in AP Pre-Calc is that we want to show we can take some function and represent it in a multiple representation, different variation. So if we want to take 3 to the x plus 2, can we rewrite it as a, b to the x power using those transformation properties that we have in the table at the top of the page? We want to describe the transformation of the y-intercept from the parent function 3 to the x for g of x and for h of x. So my idea is to take the fact that g of x is 3 to the x plus 2. And using those properties of exponents, we can rewrite that to think of g of x as 3 to the x times 3 to the 2. So we know 3 to the x is just represented that way, but 3 to the 2 power can be rewritten as 9. So our h of x function in this format, a times b to the x, is going to be a times b to the x. Our a value is 9 and our b value is 3. And we could say that g of x shifts the graph of f of x two units to the left, which we already saw previously. Then to finish our observation, we can say the y-intercept on f of x, that f of x is our parent function. So the y-intercept of f of x, which is at 0, 1, is going to get shifted on the g of x graph to negative 2, 1. We saw that in our graph because we're shifting two units left. But that 0, 1 point on the parent function is going to sh get shifted up to the point 0, 9 on our h of x function because we changed g of x to h of x 9 times 3 to the x power. I hope you've understood this first part of lesson 2.4. Join me for the second half of 2.4 tomorrow.